Hello everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to be going over some problems in engineering materials. So this is for chapter four um, and what we're going to be talking about today is vacancies. So vacancies are when you have, you know, you're supposed to have nine atoms but oh, one's missing. So the number of vacancies that are present at any particular point in time is a function of temperature. Um, so the problem asks is this. The equilibrium fraction of lattice signs that are vacant in gold at 800 degrees Celsius is 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now that's the fraction. This is calculate the number of vacancies per meter cubed, well that's going to be helpful, at 800 degrees Celsius. Assume a density of 18.45 grams per centimeter cubed for gold at 800 degrees Celsius. And notice centimeter cubed here, meter cubed here. We're probably going to do a conversion at some point, so keep that in mind. Now, we're gonna to have to do this in more or less two steps. Now, the first step is gonna be, well, how many vacancies do we have total? Because we know the fraction, but how many vacancies are there actually? So, if we look at this, let's see here. Well, we want the number of vacancies, and we would first need to start with the density. Okay, so we have that density, density of gold. And we know that's in grams per centimeter cubed. We want those vacancies, but then we need like the number of atoms per centimeter cubed. And we need to convert. Okay, so we'll need to get two atoms. So from grams straight over to atoms per centimeter cubed. Now, how are we going to do that? Hmm. Well, we don't necessarily know how to go straight from grams to atoms, but but we do know how to go from grams to moles. Because remember, we had our atomic weight of gold, which is going to be equal to um, 196.97 grams per mole. Okay. Um, and so that would get us from grams to moles. And we also know that thanks to Avogadro's number, well, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd um, atoms or molecules or chairs per mole. Okay, atoms per mole. That's working pretty good. So let's let's plug this in here because I want to go to the number of lattice sites. And that's going to be equal to Avogadro's number times my density divided by my atomic weight. And the positioning of all these is just based on their units. You'd see it fairly quickly if I tried to convert it, so I'll write it out. So that would be equal to six point zero two two times ten to the twenty third atoms per mole. I'm going to multiply that by eighteen point four five grams per centimeter cubed, and all of that over 196.97 grams per mole. So if I calculate this properly, then let's see here, moles cancels, okay that's good, grams cancels, and left with atoms per centimeter cubed. So this is just the total number of atoms, and each of these atoms is a point where I could say, okay, well, I, I have an atom there, but I, it could be a vacancy. And so the number of vacancies would be simply multiplying this by my, um, my fraction. So number of vacancies is going to be equal to that fraction, which is 2.5 times 10 to negative 5, times the total number of spots. And if I multiply that out, that would come out to be 1.41 times 10 to the 18 vacancies per centimeter cubed. And you could stop there. You know, we, we have all of our numbers. Let's go ahead and just box that. However, you'd be wrong because 
I didn't ask for vacancies per centimeter cubed. I asked for per meter cubed. So we've got to convert that. Now, how do we convert from centimeter cubed to meters cubed? Well, let's try it out right here. 1.41 times 10 to the 18th. I'm just going to say vac per centimeter cubed. I want to go to meters cubed. So we use my little train track method. Now, I, let's see. Okay, how many meters are in a centimeter? Let's go from centimeters to meters. So 100 centimeters are in one meter. Now this is cubed though, so we've got to do it three times. And so that would then be equal to 1.41 times 10 to the 24 vacancies per meter cubed. Okay. So from this, we were able to calculate the number of vacancies at this particular temperature as a function of the fraction of vacancies. I knew what the fraction that were vacancies was, and so from that, and knowing the full number of last sites, I could calculate the actual number of vacancies. So I hope this helps you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.